You can kind of see down here, I have Logic open. I've just uh, DI'd the music. I have my Switch, and I have been playing Animal Crossing um, a, a bit. It's a lot of fun. I think I've been playing up to the point where I can have like the entire... What is it? It's like the like the town hall. I can't remember. It's like the town hall is there, and you can add your own your own theme music and, and make your own flag and everything. I've gotten to that point, which is what I was really working towards, that I could write my own music, which is a really cool feature, even though you're limited to the key of C. Anyway, like I was saying, I've taken the the theme music from like the main menu, main menu and just DI'd it into the computer, which I don't do often. I I did it this time just because I had the game and it was easier to do that to get the music than to try to get a rip of it somewhere else. So I just DI'd it. Moving on to the setup. So we have the New Horizons music here. And then I just have a electric piano track open. Um, and this is where I kind of do mock-ups. Let's just play a little bit of it and listen. And then there's this really long section of just dead air. There's just nothing. So it's like a bar and a half of, of nothing playing. And then the trumpet comes back in. So like I said, pretty simple in terms of instrumentation, but harmonically it's doing some pretty cool things I'll get into in a second. Um, and it's short, so we could loop it, we can expand on it with instrumentation. I tried the tempo match it a little bit. They It starts off at 101. But then once we get over here to this dead air section that I was just talking about, you can tell that there is like another take spliced in or something like that. They kind of hang on the fourth beat. We won't use this reference track for very long. It's just to kind of listen to and, and learn the learn the music. I have a 5-4 bar and then a 3-4 bar. You can kind of listen to it here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. But that's the basic framework. So let's get into the actual harmony of the music. I'll just record the chords here. The way that it functions usually, the order of operations I guess, when it comes to making these, is just we do um, we have a reference track, and then we do uh, like a sketch, like a mock-up, just just to kind of wrap my head around what the music is doing. And and then from there, we kind of just fill out everything. We think about what instrumentation uh, we can use, because it's important to, to think about instances like this as an actual orchestra and not a computer. You think about orchestrating for like virtual instruments, if you know the techniques used for doing orchestration for a, a real orchestra, then you can make it sound more realistic. You need to think about it in terms of real people in a real space, and along with that comes imperfection. So the more that you can layer with different sample libraries, the more that you can do with making it sound more real. And then we're going to build the baseline underneath that, and then we're going to do melody on top. And there's some counter melody in there too. Up. It was a coffee break. Here it is. Here's the proof. But what music software would you recommend for beginners? Any good free software? If there's any good ones? If you have a Mac and you're using GarageBand, GarageBand comes stock with a bunch of really good sounds just out of the box. You don't have to really do a lot in terms of making that sound good. If you wanted to get some nicer samples and spend a little bit more money, try the, the free trial of East West Composer Cloud. But I still I still use a lot of East West products. A, a lot of their woodwinds are pretty good. All of their percussion, I use all of their percussion. I'm always happy to help. People put comments all the time that's like, what software are you using? And it's information that when I was starting years ago, I wish I knew. I wish, I wish somebody was more transparent with me about how to get good sounding product on the search for shakers, come on. Seed pods, there we go. 
That's not it either. Dang it. All right, it's somewhere in here. I use them all the time. Moving on. Let's do tambourine. Which Animal Crossing New Horizons song am I doing? We're doing just the title screen. Is there a title for it? Let's hold on. So this is what happens when I searched I searched uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons on Google, the OST, right? And I click the first link. I mean, that's pretty cool actually. That's just not what I was looking for. Thanks Spotify Christmas music. Let's go ahead and open up some bases. Uh, in terms of making any virtual instrument sound more realistic, it's it's all about the imperfections. Now, Andrew, believe it or not, the secret to all this is actually imperfection. Imperfection? Yeah. It's all about making it sound just on the cusp of being too perfect. Layering is really important. What can a real player do? Imagine that this is these are not tracks, but these are individual real people in a real orchestra. We're building up a good solid foundation here. You know what might be nice here is some woodwinds. I've been talking for so long, holy crap. That's embarrassing. Okay, here's the deal. I think we might try this again tomorrow. We're at the point now where it's just kind of... I'm kind of tired of this. And it's been a really long time, holy No, it's not finished. But... We're probably gonna finish it today. Alright, I'm just gonna go right into it then. Again, I need to organize this better. I have a bunch of tracks that are just... Instrument 36, Instrument 26. I'm gonna go ahead and play what we have so far. And then I'll go through each individual track and then explain it better what's going on. So here's our progress from yesterday. So that's where we are now. A lot has changed. I did a lot. Not on camera. So from yesterday, this is just our percussion. Uh, I spent way too long yesterday trying to find the shaker. It's somewhere in here. I use them all the time. And it's still not perfect, but it, it, it works well for what, I'm, what I need it for. So we just have uh, uh, bongos, tambourine, and shakers. The basses is kind of titled incorrectly. It's more like slow strings. Woodwinds. I like the woodwinds. This this section here I really like at the beginning. We have this 
descending clarinet line here that meets up with uh, the bassoon down here. So this is the this is the fl I think this is, is this the flute. No, this is the oboe by itself. And then the flute by itself. And the clarinet by itself. All of these, this, these lines that you see, these kind of little bars, this is automation data. And what automation data is, all it's doing is controlling different parameters for each track. And this is controlling the modulation, the mod wheel on the keyboard. The, the mod wheel for the Cine Sample Cine Winds controls the, the volume. So I have it set to control the volume so it's doing dynamics. So anytime you see these kind of lines all over the place, that's just automation data. Going back here, I have two patches running here. So we have a flute legato and a flute staccato, and both of these combined are making a more human-like sound. And this is what that sounds like. So the legato by itself is just this. And then the staccato, totally different track, combined, make a single passage. Sounds a little bit more lifelike, a little bit more, a little bit more human. I've done some of some other stuff down here. So the clarinets are also doing this little passage that, in the original, I, is done by some synth sound. I can find it here. That little synth path passage is being played by the clarinets. Yes, said hi. This is live, not pre-recorded. The, the other thing is that in the original track, they have something, some kind of reed instrument. I'm guessing it's like, it sounds like a melodica. If you don't know what a melodica is, here, let me grab one. This is a melodica, and they are awesome. If you're a keyboard player, pick up a melodica. They're a lot of fun. This is, a, this, it's like a little keyboard. Sometimes a tube, you can have a shorter mouthpiece. It kind of sounds like an accordion. Maybe not this exact instrument, but something that sounds really similar to it. Listen for that in the background, you can kind of hear it. So that's here, in the flute part. Doubled with the strings that are playing it. The string part is interesting. Let's take a look at the solo violin part. So this is a patch from East West. I was saying yesterday how much I like East West. The solo violin, and this is kind of weird, and people will ask sometimes, I know when I did Scott the Waz's anime video, I did a lot of string stuff, and the way that I, I achieve some sort of idea or concept of a realistic violin patch is I'll combine solo violin patches from a lot of different libraries to make one orchestral string section instead of just pulling, you know, oh, I can just grab my Berlin strings uh, first violins legato patch, which is a whole violin section. Instead, I make my own violin section with solo violins from a bunch of different libraries because a real human violin section is going to have a lot of varied players. Every player is going to sound different. That Meyer guy says, hey, uh, are you going to make more transcriptions like Gusty Garden or Fossil Falls? Maybe. I think that it's, an, it's a balance of finding what's appropriate to do. Sometimes it's not really appropriate to do a transcription of, a, of, of music from something. If there's already a version that exists, that's better. You know, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a transcription of something that's already out there in full that sounds much better than what I could do with, like, a, li with like a live orchestra. If any trailers drop, I, I don't know if there's a Metroid trailer. Once that trailer comes out and there's music for it, I'm definitely doing it. It's gonna be awesome. Everyone watching, if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe below. I have links down there too for Twitter. There's one for SoundCloud. You, there's my website too if you want to check out some of the other work that I've done. That's not just video game stuff, you can go there. So this is just the solo violin at the very beginning. I'll go in here and explain what all these different things are going on. So we have our, our melody here, right? 
I'll leave this up here. If you're not familiar with what a piano roll is, basically a keyboard turned on its side. It goes left to right. Every bar that you see here um, is delegated to one of these keys on the left side. So as this scrolls past, it'll go over these bars and as a result, play the key that's appropriate on the left. And these down here um, are called key switches. Now, some patches have different articulations built into the same instrument. To achieve those articulations, you have to play key switches, which are basically like the name implies. It's just a switch that's on the bottom end of the keyboard that acts like an on and off switch. The, the G down here might be a staccato, so when I press that key and then play a note, it'll play a staccato note. You can see without the key switches, it sounds pretty bad. I add them back in. We have instrument 31, great naming scheme. I love that little banana. It's like this, it's like they've glissed up to it and missed it and then found the pitch. All right, so this is our progress and this is where we are um, currently. Why is all of this scooted over? Yeah, you know, honestly, I don't know why. I wish the, that Nintendo would do more orchestral stuff. I think, wasn't there, I think there's a video somewhere. You can listen to the, the beta music from Super Mario Galaxy 2 and they're using, not bad, but dated sounding samples. And then compare that to this. My favorite Nintendo song overall. That is a good question. Or, or you know what, I really like the music from Super Mario World. There's that rag. Uh, how's it go? I love that. But the, but the classic just... That's my... Uh, that's... If I had to pick one Nintendo song, that would be it. It's the best. All right, now um, I think I want to add a suspended. Uh, OBS just crashed. Uh, luckily, we're we're still good. Okay, back to business. One right there. And then one long one here. I need more bass. And the way that we're going to do that is this trick that I learned. I forget where I learned it, but uh, nevertheless, it proves to work very well. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and go in here and add a synth bass. This might work well. So, And this is something you won't hear. You're not going to hear this. It's it's just to boost up the low end. All right. I think we're we're reaching a point where we're really close and I might call it quits and then refine it and then upload it tomorrow. I think we're done. You know, also if you're not subscribed yet, um subscribe down below. The ambassador asks, "What piece was the hardest for you to compose?" The hardest piece is to write are not the pieces I've done for the channel or for Scott or anything. It's been like notated pieces, like scores. Not like scores, like film scores, but like a uh, concert music, like sheet music. He, Scott is the best to work with. He's honestly great and, and very easy to work with in terms of letting me and others, I guess, do what they want. As long as it sounds good and the product is good at the end. Yeah, Jacob, that's what I was going to say. I think 6.6 thousand subs is not something to off at. I, I, I'm very fortunate. This this entire channel was a fluke to begin with, so I, I never set out to make a channel that was popular. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. We'll get there. We're almost there. We're steadily increasing, and I think we will. And uh, take care of yourself, you know? Take it easy. Have a good rest of the night, guys. See you later.